In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how to track small moving objects with your motion tracker. This is one of the most difficult things that we find ourselves doing sometimes when we're video editing. Many of the tutorials on motion tracking will pick a large object or something with huge contrast difference between the object and the surrounding video and it looks very easy. We're going to show you in this tutorial one of the more challenging ways to track something and then in other tutorials we'll show you some of the other features on less daunting tasks. So we're going to take the challenge here of tracking a license plate. I have a clip here on track number one. I'm going to simply click on it and then choose tools above that menu and choose my motion tracker. Now that I'm in my motion tracker screen, we're going to look at the box and resize it to try to focus on our license plate. Now we, we could pick any particular part of the car that we think is distinct. I could take the windshield, I could try the mirror, but let's see what happens if we simply focus on the license plate itself. And then with that as my tracker, number one, I simply click track. And we see it works until I get to a place where the image is changed right there at the pole. So what I want to do is I want to change it at this point. Now in CyberLink PowerDirector version 17, I have another tool here which will allow me to track by frame. And that's what we're going to do. Now the area we've tracked is in this lighter color. And if I move frame by frame, we're going to adjust it so that I, rem I put the frame back in touch with the object. So here I'm going to click it and it will turn light and then pop back when it's done. I've just set another single frame for my tracker. And now we're going to move on the other side of the pole and track it again. Click once. This may take a little bit of time because it doesn't do it instantly. You notice there's a delay there. And I'll click it again. It will set another keyframe. And I'll do one more. And now I think I'm pretty much clear of the pole and focusing on the license plate. So now I'll try my regular track until we lose it again. Okay, then we go back to where we did. <clears throat> was fine all the way till we got up to the post for the garbage, uh, garbage can here. So we're going to move it a little bit over to the right. And here's where we lost it. So now we're going to go back to our single tracker, frame by frame, which is new in version 17. I'll click there and wait till it turns light again. And then we'll move here. We'll click again. We'll click again. And we'll probably lose it when it reaches this uh, telephone pole. And we did. So again, we move back to the place where we lost it. And I can, don't have to worry about it till I get to the other side of the pole. We'll move one frame at a time. Now we'll move our tracker to cover the license plate. We'll go frame by frame for a few frames. And then we'll track it to the end of the clip. Okay, now I have it tracked. If I go back and play the clip, it should pretty much focus on the license plate through the entire clip. 
It took a little bit of patience, but that's not too bad. Now, the other thing we want to do is we want to add a blur. So I'm going to click on step three, which is my effects. And we're going to choose this box. Uh, grid scale is fine where it is. Now I want to click on the adjust effect size with the tracked object. What that means is the larger the uh, object gets, the license plate approaches the camera, uh, I want the box, the, the effect, to get larger as well. Now here we have it inside the, the tracking object. I could have it anywhere in or around, but usually since the license plate was tracked well, I want it inside there. That will work, should work out pretty good. Let's click on that. Now we'll see that blurred as I play it. And that turned out pretty good. I have an option in version 17 to show or hide the tracker when I do the preview. So let's try that again. And now I just see the blur. I don't see the tracker. It looks like it's a little small, uh, so I may have to move partway into my video and then make sure I can enlarge right here. That looks pretty good. Let's make our box a little bit bigger. And it's, it's blurred right. So I click on OK when I'm done. And then we'll see what it looks like when we play it in our movie mode. And we have blurred out something very small coming toward the camera uh, with some measure of accuracy. Now, if you want to make sure this is as perfect as possible, there's another way to make adjustments. You simply click on the effect or I can click on the effect button at the top. It's mosaic. I'm going to stretch this out quite wide. It's a mask. I'll click on keyframe. And now I see I have keyframe controls uh, for the width, height, and for the mask. I can actually expand them here so I can see all of the individual keyframes that I have. And I can make adjustments if I want to in any one of them. This would only be if you want to do very tedious stuff. If the demands of your project are very extreme, you can go keyframe by keyframe and make some changes here. For example, I can click on the word mask here on this keyframe and I can enlarge it to cover it one frame at a time now that it's mapped them out for me. And again, I can go to the next keyframe Click on the word mask again, and I can adjust that accordingly. So if you have a very precise client or very precise needs, you can go into this and make those changes. We'll just close that out. And uh, so that's a way you can also adjust it once you've done the regular job of motion tracking in CyberLink PowerDirector version 17.